Welcome to the Voice for Mount Pleasant podcast, featuring discussions and interviews about the people, places, and events that make Mount Pleasant such a special place. Hello, this is Roger Gaither, your host for the Voice for Mount Pleasant podcast. Today, the publisher of Mount Pleasant magazine, Bill Mascio, is talking with the mayor of Mount Pleasant, Will Haney. And now, here's Bill and Will. I am so honored today, everyone. We're here with Will Haney. He is the mayor for Mount Pleasant, and I'm just I'm just honored you're here, and I appreciate it very much, Will. Yeah, I know you're a dog person, aren't you? Big time. Yeah, what do you got? What's the name of your pup? Well, um, my pup is Rusty. He's a rescue through Palmetto Paws. He is the most amazing dog. I'm not saying the best because I've had great ones, the most amazing dog because he is a mixed breed. And we didn't know what we were getting. We just knew he looked cute and smart, and he was tiny when we got him. He's seven now. Okay. Here's what I figured out. I have been a purebred dog owner all my life, purebred shepherds. I, I tend towards the shepherd. When you get a mutt, it's like getting a smartphone that has a whole bunch of apps on it. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, funny. We, we did his DNA test, and we found out he's part Border Collie, and you know how smart they are. He's part uh, Russell Terrier, not the little Jack, but the big Russell Terrier. So he's got intense energy in this intense drive. Um, he's part probably Coyote, up to 25%. Really? DNA, and he's part Boxer and part Staffordshire or Pitbull, whatever that is. And there's nothing he doesn't do. He herds, he retrieves, he swims. Um, he fetches, he, he just does everything. That's and great. Listen to you. You love him to death. All these little apps running. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. For those who don't know, Suzette is a teacher at what school again? He's at Jenny Moore, fifth grade. Yeah, Jenny Moore. So what did you and Suzette do um, to, to keep yourself safe? What did you do as a person? Wow. And, and thinking back to March, that seems like years ago now. But remember one of the slower things to happen going back to March was for the schools to close. And we were very concerned that week after states of emergency were issued, but yet schools had not been told to close. Um, the first thing we did, and, and my dad's a, a retired physician, and he, this stuff is right up his alley. He was calling, emailing and everything and talking about, you know, simple precautions, wipe your hands, don't touch your face, you know, all this kind of stuff. At that time in March, remember the mask the mask issue was not what it, what it is today. Um, but the main thing we did was we stayed home. I remember, I think it was three weeks that I didn't even leave my home. Wow. I had to go to the town. Sometimes I had to go sign something. Um, but I didn't go anywhere for three weeks. And um, so Let she, me ask you something. about This is maybe a question for Suzette, but what has she heard about schools going back and everything, Will? Um, They've heard some preliminary things. They may be an A-B thing. Um, parents have been given the choice of keeping their children out. Nobody knows who, if they have children in the classroom and children learning remotely, they're not sure who's going to be doing the teaching. It's, it's a big question mark right now. When we get in the thick of this and you're, 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 you're having to make decisions and the town's having to make decisions, how many special town council meetings did you have since the 1st of March? Um, we had our regular March meeting on the second Tuesday of March, and then we had an emergency meeting, which would have probably been the following Monday. I think that was... I'm guessing the 15th, because I will always remember it's a scrapbook moment in my head, signing a declared emergent, civil emergency for the town of Mount Pleasant on the 16th of March. Okay. Which at the time, we thought that emergency would last two weeks. It was, it was for two weeks. And here we are at the end of June. Now, we are not still under that uh, civil emergency. That's an extreme measure. But um, then we had... Um, probably two more during March, and I think we had one in April. So I think we've had four or five emergency um, council meetings during, during all of that. And which one of those really between the, the first one in March, your regular one, till, till the one that was fr yesterday, yeah. what, what has been the most difficult one of all of them, Will? You know, I thought at first, Bill, that it would have been the first emergency meeting that we had where – Council voted down a non-binding uh, resolution to urge the governor to do a stay-at-home order, which he did uh, about a week later. I thought that was the hardest one, but I'm going to say the last one that we just did 
on Monday where we did pass uh, pass a mask ordinance and not so much that that the topic was any harder but everybody is tired we are all stressed we are all tired I know I'm at the end of uh, I have reached several times the end of my physical limit and just had to kind of rest for a couple of days um, I think we've all reached that what the psychologists call decision fatigue and so I think um, some tempers and nerves were a little strained when we met uh, on Monday, and that's regrettable. But you know what? That's reality, too. So you had a six to two vote uh, to wear masks in the town of Mount Pleasant. Is that correct? Yes, we did. OK, with that in mind, can you tell our viewers what will happen if somebody doesn't have a mask? What will happen? Yeah, if somebody, can a police officer stop somebody in? in civil, it, it's a civil thing. Okay. Uh, it, is, it is not a criminal thing. Okay. But, um, that having been said, um, because under Carl Ritchie, as, as, you, as you've seen with a lot of things, um, our police are all about uh, improving life in Mount Pleasant. I agree. And he has taught me there's a, there's a big difference between public service and public safety and law enforcement. And my, my guess is that all of our town staff, and, and I think Eric DeMora has a tremendous staff that he has built as our town administrator, uh, which you all chronicled, you know, his work and everything in, in a recent edition. Um, I think what will happen is that uh, just like with cigarettes smoking, you know, the no smoking, just like with shirts and shoes, once you pass an ordinance, whether you're writing tickets or not, the public realizes this is serious business. And it does have the force of law behind it, which it should. Um, but people will be admonished. But the best thing is, Bill, as I said in, in the media and I said in that meeting, it is not the government closing businesses right now. It is the virus closing businesses right now. Look at the who's who list of Mount Pleasant restaurants and bars that have closed. I mean, just this week on Coleman Boulevard alone, Arts and Pages have had to close down. Yes. Bars. That is sad. Um, so what it does is it also gives business owners the, um, the, back, the, the backing of the town so that they can say, I am sorry, due to a, an emergency ordinance, I, I cannot, you know, allow you not, to not have a mask in this establishment if it's one that, that falls under the thing. And that's big. That's giving businesses a tool to make their workplace a more safe place. And, that's and yes, and, and they're protecting their customers by wearing a mask. So it's, it's something, one of the things, Will, that I've found fascinating, it's a, it, even though it's a terrible thing what's going on, we are all on the same page for the most part. My other question, I've got a couple, of course, but uh, what was it like, Will, managing a, uh, managing a town during the pandemic? What's it like? Um, it was, it's the hardest um, challenge. I mean, we've all had family challenges. We've all had family illnesses. We've had the loss of family members and nothing compares, you know, to dealing with, with unexpected things or emergencies with those closest to you that you love. But in terms of feeling the weight of responsibility and decision-making, Bill, this is the hardest thing I have ever done in my entire life. And I've had lots of ups and downs in my life and um, I'm somewhat of a survivor and an overcomer. But I, I have never felt the weight of responsibility more than I have in this situation. And I think all elected officials, I'm not unique and it's not just because I'm mayor. I think all council members and elected officials would say the same thing because this was not like a hurricane. We can pull, we can pull the hurricane plan out like this and everybody knows what to right. do and what benchmarks are. There was no template for this. That's exactly right. Plus, when the hurricane comes through, it's gone. But, you know, we have, a, we have an article in the next issue of Mount Pleasant Magazine. We have an interview with Helen Hill. And she did have something to say. And, and she, as a matter of fact, it's a great article. Ann Tool did it. One of her comments was, after the hurricane left, they had to rebuild. Okay? And, and after this leaves... We, at least we don't have buildings to rebuild, and right. at least we don't. So, so hopefully that that I thought that was a very positive thing to look at because everybody that's been through Hugo uh, compares this what we're going through to, and there's as you said, there's no there's no real comparison. Uh, what's the most difficult for the when you look at the town as a whole? Um, what do you think the most difficult obstacle that we've had in our town during this time? The most difficult obstacle has been from uh, me with council and council with the people and the people with each other. 
all of our structure, all of our decision-making infrastructure and all of our social infrastructure is trying to do what you were just talking about, keep everybody on the same page and fighting this virus together because as we have seen and we saw with this emergency meeting this week on the topic of our mask is people fighting each other. That has been very hard. And um, uh, that has been hard. The other thing that I will say was, was really hard. And somebody, a very wise person told me, said, if you think the going into the protective things back in March and April was hard, said, wait till you start coming out. Um, and I think now everybody realizes by conventional wisdom, when you see what's where South Carolina is now, we collectively came out too soon. Uh, we came out before we had 14 days of reduced numbers. Now here we are at the end of June going into the 4th of July weekend, and we are the people that other states are warning their people about, and that is sad. So that was a very difficult thing about what to open when, how soon, you know, and it, it was not easy. I think the governor did the best job he could. Um, the one thing that I told him when he and I discussed it was, um, I get it that what's happening in, in Charleston, Mount Pleasant, North Charleston may be very different than what's happening in Oconee County or Allendale County, and I get it. So that if you say statewide mask order, you say state, statewide closing of restaurants or bars, I, t I totally get that there is a difference there. Um, so one of the things I asked the governor for early and um, we're, we're getting this now about the mask. He says, I'm not going to do a mask ordinance, but I'm not going to stop y'all if y'all want to do one municipally, and we've already done that. Um, so, Bill, this, this has just been a, a dance of the uncertain, a dance of the unknown. And I will tell anybody, I told a council member the other day who was very upset with me, I haven't been right on everything. I haven't handled everything perfectly. Uh, or even that great, but I really have given it my all and done the best I can. And that's, that's all we can ask of anybody, no matter what position that, that, that they're in. It's kind of hard when you look at everything to, to think that people don't see what's going on uh, because, of, because it's duplicated in other areas. In your opinion, did the Columbia work well with the municipalities? Yeah, I, I will say they did. Um, I think they worked very well. And what we did here going back to March and April – was our county council chairman, Elliot Summy, would get on the phone. Um, he got on the phone uh, in manageable size groups with Charleston, North Charleston, and Mount Pleasant about some of the big issues like hotels, short-term rentals, and all that. And then he got on the phone with the island municipalities as the issues came up about the barricades and, and those type things and tried to keep everybody on the same page. And then we let our county speak to the state more for us and this is when the phones were ringing all the time. Um, since then, the governor makes spot calls, and he's called me. And I talked to Mayor Tecklenburg this morning. He had called Mayor Tecklenburg this morning. Um, what we're concerned about right now is uh, the lack of social distancing in bars, and we're, we're getting indications even medically that, uh, that the bar scene is becoming a super spreader uh, concentration of the virus. So um, we need the state to maybe address that. But, Do you uh, feel that's going to happen? Uh, no, not necessarily. I think it might. Um, I, I think there's a chance that it will. It won't be a shutdown, but I think the state might come out and do some some uh, stronger limits on occupancy uh, ca capacity kind of thing. Right, right. Uh, but certainly, I think the uncertainty, you mentioned it early on. I think that's the biggest thing, and not to – keep talking about hurricanes, but there's a certain uncertainty we have with a hurricane. This is so uncertain that I just hope, I hope, it, what, what is the biggest lesson that the towns learned uh, from this? Uh, because, you know, we do walk away from experiences learning something. And so what, what do you think we've learned as, as a town? Are you talking about the town's people or are you talking about the town government? Or well, I want to go to the town people first, and then I'd like to drill down to the government. So what are the citizens, what do you think from you listening to people in our community and from listening to people talk and the questions that you get that no one else does, what do you think we've learned as a, as a community? I think the first thing we have learned, and it sounds cliche, is how quickly and drastically life can change 
without any warning. Think about the conversations we were having in January and February, nothing to do with any of this. Right. Who would have thought that so many jobs would be lost, so many people would be on unemployment? So I think we've learned one thing, and I'll use a, a catch-all term, is resiliency. That we need to plan, whether it's cash flow, whether it's business models, whether it's relationships, whether it's communication models, that we have got to have a more resilient uh, infrastructure. And I mean that like, like you and I talking, you know, that's part of our social infrastructure right there. Um, and I'll say to the town, um, we are one of the best because of our staff, not, not because of the mayor, but because of the staff. Um, they have very, very good uh, emergency skills. We have a trained professional emergency coordinator who is fantastic. Amanda Knight is her name. And, um, and Eric DeMoore. She's done a good job. Amanda's done, done a good job. But this was new for everybody. Keeping yes. amounts of PPE, um, keeping supplies of all the things you need um, when you have um, what, what they're now talking about is, is a, a overall health care resiliency for everybody, um, governments, businesses, and institutions. That was on um, a, a, a Zoom cast I was on previously today is looking down the road. Never waste a lesson learned in something like this and, and apply it to the future. I think when when we go through things like this, and and of course none of us have gone through exactly. The, I think right. you have to you have to make your decisions not based on what how it's going to affect you tomorrow because it's so easy to do. You have to make decisions even during these times of what's going to happen, what, how it's going to affect you a year from now or or months from now. And it's easy when you're in a crisis to make the the a quick decision because it's simpler. Then I think you've done a great job. I think that. Uh, that the, the town as a whole has a really pulled together. Do you not see that? Give us an example. Give the audience an example how you've seen us pulled together. I would say the very first thing and, and the place I knew, um, the, the place I knew that we were going to be okay as a town is when um, the restaurants had to shut down and the outpouring of support that the Mount Pleasant people gave to get takeout from their restaurants to help save jobs, to help keep these these businesses going. That was the first thing that I saw. That's and great. It was, it was Mount Pleasant people that started the um, Feed Our Heroes, where you, you used a gift certificate or you went online and bought food and they delivered it to the frontline workers in healthcare who were working. And you know, that was March or April. It's worse now. Um, Roper uh, system had a 65% increase in hospitalized patients in one day. And that was yesterday. So this is still going. Oh, yeah. It was Mount Pleasant and Mount Pleasant people, Bill. And I, I told somebody I could not be more proud to be an elected official anywhere or any place. There's nowhere else I would rather be than right here in Mount Pleasant. I agree. Amen to that, brother. Amen to that. Um, hey, you said that you really enjoyed the uh, last issue of Mount Pleasant Magazine with the mask in the front. Uh, oh, yeah. Tell me why you enjoyed it. Why do you enjoy that issue? Well, you, you, you got such a grasp on it, and, and I think, you know, you're a pro who did this when Hugo hit over 30 years ago, so you know how to capture the event, and not only the dynamics that were in there, but the timeline that you have. Um, I, I was telling you before we, we did the, the um, cast here, that, uh, the, the podcast, that I decided the second week of this that I better keep a notebook and keep a journal. Every phone call, every text, every topic, because there was so much information coming at me. I'm trying to think, okay, was this, you know, who was this conversation with? What was decided? What was the info? And I've got all the numbers. It's hundreds of pages, Bill. It's, it's a notebook about that. Well, if you don't mind, I'd like to make that announcement we talked about before. Uh, for those that are watching, I asked our, our mayor if he would be so inclined. Because for those that don't know, he's a journalist. That's one of the, that's one of the traits and in, in, that's his, one of his crafts. And so uh, Will has agreed, our mayor has agreed to do in the next issue of Mount Pleasant Magazine, which will be the September, October edition, he's going to do a lengthy article uh, about what it's like to manage a town during a pandemic. So it's, and I appreciate that, Will. That'll be, there'll be a lot of people out there wanting to, uh, 
wanting to read that. In closing, I want to just ask you if you had anything you'd like to communicate. I mean, I mean, what I, I still want to hear what the takeaway is for this. What is the takeaway? The real takeaway for the for the town administration for the for the workers there. What what is that takeaway? The the real takeaway is is almost cliched is that we are better together and we work together. We're all together in this. I saw an illustration yesterday that somebody put on. There's there's a lot of junk out there, but this was really good. It said imagine if this uh, imagine if you had a pack of glitter and you walked around town with glitter all day. Think about how many people are going to have glitter on them by the end of the day. And that's what this is like dealing with the virus that's so small you cannot see it on an optical microscope. So everything we do affects each other. Every, every careless act, every, every careless disregard of all the protocols we've been given. And we have, got, we have learned that we have to work to together. Work together. Pulling in for people. I've seen people helping other people's businesses, delivering meals. Look at the number of meals that have been delivered to our uh, town staff, police, fire, public services who are out there on the front lines. Don't, don't uh, forget our folks that pick up the uh, garbage every day, they are as just as much at risk with all the surfaces and everything they touch. So we've got a lot of unsung heroes out there. But this town, the town of Mount Pleasant, our people stepped up and said, you're our heroes and we appreciate what you're doing. And I just couldn't, I, I get a lump in my throat thinking about it, Bill. So, Mayor, uh, I haven't felt comfortable asking anybody in my staff to do some of the distribution in the grocery stores. So, I personally have been the ones doing it. And I've got to tell you, I've been talking to some of the, the grocery store workers are like heroes too, you know. And I was talking to one of the guys at a Publix up there in Park West and uh, about because I was listening as I was distributing the magazines to his interaction with the, with the customer base there. And it was so polite, so congenial. People were coming in and just so So I asked him when he had, when nobody was in front of him, I asked him, I said, are people nice like that all the time? He says, you know, an, another vendor came in just the other day and we were talking about that. And the main thing is for all of us, Will, uh, Mayor, is to, capture the thoughts and the emotions we have now and bottle them inside our hearts and soul and make sure that a month from now, 10 months from now, when we don't have the same thing to deal with, we still remember those kind words we heard or those kind words we said. I think it's so yes. important. You know? So yes. check this out, Mayor. This is a, so we got a, we got a mask here. So anybody, that, that, isn't that cool, dude? Do you like that? I love you got to get me one. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Mayor, thank you so much for coming, and, and I look forward to publishing your memoirs, if you would, about going through this effort. And, again, I know you're really busy, and I appreciate you joining us here on Voice 4 Mile Pleasant. It's my pleasure, and thank you, Bill, for the way that you and your publications capture the heart and soul of our community, and that means a lot. Well, I appreciate it, Mayor. Thanks a lot very much. Thank you. Thanks for spending your time with the Voice for Mount Pleasant podcast by Mount Pleasant Magazine. Your community, your podcast. Listen to past episodes at voice4mp.com.